Hi, so um, I'm a PhD student at Cornell in biological and environmental engineering, and I work on heat stress in dairy cattle, so I'll be presenting on this uh, project using utter skin temperature as a heat stress indicator in lactating dairy cattle. Um, so, uh, so the um, dairy industry loses a lot of money due to heat stress every year. A 2003 study that has been often quoted suggested up to 1.5 billion uh, losses in 2003, which is 4 to 7 percent of the value of the industry in that year. And uh, oftentimes rectal temperature is used as an indicator of heat stress. It's considered the best indicator of heat stress, but it's also difficult to measure as the animals would need to be confined. Skin temperature is fast and non-invasive, but it's less reliable than rectal temperature. Um, and, and the other issue is if there's a presence of hair, then the cow has to be shaved to actually access the skin temperature. However, the cow's udder usually does not have much hair, and oftentimes farmers remove the hair that is there. So this is an opportunity to use a, an area that will not have hair on it and take a skin temperature there. The cow's udder is also highly vascularized and one of the hottest regions of a lactating cow's body. So there's a lot of blood that's passing through the udder and even coming to the surface of the skin. So our hypothesis was that the udder skin temperature may be better than other skin temperatures as a heat stress indicator. Um, our objective was to determine the correlation between production traits of milk yield and feed intake and the physiological parameters of rectal temperature, respiration rate, utter skin temperature, and body surface temperature. In this case, we simulated a production environment and did not shave the body surface temperature on the other locations of the cow. Um, the study used eight first lactation Holsteins that were 100 to 190 days in milk. Six weeks of data was collected two times per day on milk production and feed intake and rectal temperature, respiration rate, utter skin temperature, and body surface temperature average for the neck, side, and tail head were all taken five times per day. So the cows in the study were heat stressed for eight hours per day, so uh, one measurement was taken before heat stress, and um, then the rectal temperature was taken before heat stress and after the eight hours of heat stress and the other parameters, the respiration rate and the skin temperatures, were taken every two hours during heat stress. Then those were averaged to one daily value for the analysis. Uh, the first week the cows did not have heat stress imposed or any cooling used. The, for the next five weeks the cows were subjected to moderate heat stress, the temperature humidity index of 79.5 for the eight hours per day. Then four cows were conductively cooled and um, these cows experienced less heat stress. The control cows were exposed to this stressful environment with no conductive cooling. So the important thing for this study was that some of the cows were less heat stressed, were essentially mildly heat stressed, and the other cows were um, moderately to highly heat stressed. So, and then for the final week, the control and experimental cows were switched. So the net effect was that we had data for each cow on moderate, um, mild, and borderline um, high heat stress. So then we looked at the correlations among the production traits of the milk yield and feed intake with the respiration rate, utter skin temperature, the rectal temperature, and the body surface temperatures. And these correlations were analyzed in JMP. Uh, the results show that the utter skin temperature and the respiration rate were approximately equally correlated with rectal temperature. And both were more strongly correlated with rectal temperature than the body surface was. And this shows in figure one, the utter temperature had a correlation of 0.65, the respiration rate of 0.68, and the body surface temperature of 0.30 with rectal temperature. And for this analysis, data from all eight cows was pooled, and the correlation was run between the utter temperature, respiration rate, or body surface temperature, and the rectal temperature. Um, next, we looked at the correlations with milk yield, shown here. Um, the rectal temperature, not surprisingly, had the strongest correlation with the milk yield. And this is because the, when the core temperature increases, this causes the hormonal changes that will downregulate the milk production. So uh, it's, it was expected that this would have the strongest correlation with the milk yield. Uh, the feed intake and utter temperature were somewhat similar with feed intake at 0.57 and utter temperature at 0.53.
And the udder temperature outperformed respiration rate as an indicator of heat stress and was also considerably better than the body surface temperature in the other regions, which was 0.23. Um, so the correlation coefficients for the uh, rectal temperature and the udder temperature versus male field were approximately equal for the four control or ID more heat stress cows. Regardless of whether they were calculated from pooling data for all four cows or from separately analyzing the data for each cow. So um, in this figure three, this, it, this was focusing on the four cows that were more highly stressed, which is why the correlations are stronger. And for the rectal temperature and the outer temperature, the red shows if the data from all four cows is combined, and the purple shows if it was calculated individually for each of the four cows. And then an average and standard deviation was found from the individual correlations for the four cows. However, for the respiration rate, the pool was 0.37 and the average was 0.64. And um, we hypothesized that this is because of a high between cow variation for the respiration rate. So for example, one cow in the study always tended to have a low respiration rate, so she was ranging from about 45 to 75 depending on how stressed she was, and other cows had a high respiration rate and would range more from 80 to 120. So, so essentially, if you know that the cow's respiration rate is 75 or 80, that doesn't tell you much, because for some cows, that's mild stress, and for others, it's high stress. Um, however, once you have the information on what this cow typically is, then knowing what her respiration rate is lets you compare whether she's more heat stressed that day versus another day. So this may mean that if farmers could keep track of a few individual cows and what their respiration rate typically was, this might be a useful tool to be able to, um, as a better indicator of what the herd average really is than just randomly sampling cows with no information on what that cow typically has for a respiration rate. Uh, so in summary, the male production uh, feed intake, rectal temperature, respiration rate, utter skin temperature, and body surface temperature were measured um, on eight cows that were exposed to mild to moderate heat stress for six weeks, and the correlations between the rectal temperature and milk yield and other traits were analyzed. And the conclusions were that utter skin temperature may be a useful indicator of heat stress since it is fast and non-invasive and compared favorably with respiration rate, especially if there's no prior information on that individual cow. Uh, however, body surface temperature in other locations was not a good heat stress indicator. Um, and the between cow variability and respiration rate seemed to be high, suggesting that farmers might get better results from respiration rate if they kept track of a few individual cows and what her respiration rate typically is under known conditions.